And now it is telling us it is ready for our input. All right. Uh, tell me how to make espresso. And there we've got it. Your own personal AI, right in your own machine. No third party data going anywhere. All of your stuff is all just within your own machine locally. All right, here's my walkthrough of the Raspberry Pi. Um, here's the Pi. We've got the specs up there. Um, Pi, the new Raspberry 5 is awesome. It's got the, um, the quad core in it. And the uh, one I got is the eight gigabyte RAM. <clears throat> this is a little bit of an unboxing also right here. Uh, so what was different about the uh, about this one is it's uh, supposedly supposed to be twice as fast, if not more, than their last model, uh, which sounds pretty cool. We'll see how that goes. Um, <clears throat> uh, here also is the um, the active and passive cooler that they recommend using. Uh, those are the heating pads. You want to try and make sure that those pads line up correctly on the chips that they are trying to cool off. Um, they, uh, they recommend uh, using like this right here. Um, there are two little screw button things that you can see those little white things on the edges. Those actually uh, click through and hold the whole thing in place but you do want to have the pads um, nice and tight on top of there as well uh, just to make sure that the uh, the heat dissipation uh, goes well for you uh, and then right here you're gonna see I'm struggling to figure out why this doesn't fit on there uh, the pie comes with a little cap on top of that little uh, compart that, that little port right there that you'll see I'm about to plug this into uh, right there I'm showing you oh, yeah there's a cap right here uh, so that thing pops off and you can plug in your fan uh, you want the red wire to be the wire that faces inwards uh, inwards towards the rest of the board and once that is on there your Raspberry 5 is ready to go <clears throat> Except for I also had this case. Uh, this case is pretty nice. Uh, you can tell that it is definitely not made for the five. It was made for the four, I, I believe. Um, so there's a, a hole in it that it was for the fan, but I think it, it works for it anyways. Uh, and so, yep, that's showing you the GPIO pins, uh, how it sits in there with all of the with the fan and everything. Uh, the Raspberry Pi also has an on button. Uh, and then that right there uh, on the bottom is where you're gonna slide in your micro SD card. And then, so once you have that all ready to go, then you can um, put, a, you can flash your drive, uh, whatever operating system you want. So right here we're starting on uh, randallthomasmusic.com and we are going to go into the Raspberry Pi uh, website and find their imager. This is definitely the easiest way to flash the image onto your uh, micro SD card. Um, and so to do this, uh, just insert the micro SD card into uh, a computer and um, then you can choose to flash the image on there. Uh, so right here we're going to choose which device we are uh, using. So choosing the Raspberry Pi 5 and the operating system we are going to forego the Ras uh, Raspberry Pi operating system and go into the general purpose and Ubuntu. Um, I chose Ubuntu because uh, it's really friendly with people. Uh, that's the micro SD card, so choose to write that on there. 
Uh, and uh, also Ubuntu is a uh, pretty um, well known for working well with uh, AI. Uh, okay, so when you yeah, so if you're gonna flash your SD card uh, and there's stuff on it, you're gonna have to put in a password, and then that's gonna flash on there. All right, now that we have Ubuntu in our machine and we have logged in. Uh, we are now going to uh, let's see. We want to start with the terminal because that is where we should be living most of our time. And so let's see. Let's make a assistant directory. We'll house all of our files in there. Uh, let's go cd into there. And let's see. First thing we want to do is go at Great update. Make sure we have all of the files in there. You're going to have to put in your root password. Hopefully it's long like mine. All right, uh, so now, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then let's see, we want to get git. Uh, so sudo apt install git. That was pretty fast for me because I already have that installed. Uh, and then we also want to get the Python 3 environment. So that would be sudo apt install python3 uh, vnv. And uh, so that we can add our uh, our files in our machine in there. Uh, so let's see, we want to first create the environment. So Python 3. Uh, if I'm stumbling a lot and saying a lot of ums, I apologize. I usually don't talk and type at the same time. Yeah. All right, so we've made our environment and then we need to activate it, so source uh, all right now that we have that activated uh, we will want to get the uh, gguf model uh, or file for the model and that can be found at the hugging face dot com uh, slash the bloke sorry huggingface.co slash the bloke uh, and I'll have links and everything for and all the commands uh, written out in the description here but um, so I'll have a link that goes directly to this gguf file uh, but I'm gonna find it here just so you can see that this guy's got a bunch of other uh, ggufs and there we go and it's the gguf file that we're looking for and that's this is a, a GGUF file is a quantized uh, model so it makes it smaller and able to run on the on CPU uh, more aptly uh, all right so once we find this page we are going to get these commands Can't I? Right. and you'll probably see me kind of stumble around uh, using copy and paste on here as well because I'm used to Max and I'm running Ubuntu right now which I usually do not run but I do like it all right so uh, yeah I didn't get much any output uh, you might get some output there because uh, I've already installed it and, uh, for the first time you might get some actual output uh, and then we're going to go ahead and just copy this command also, and this command gets the assistant or the. Uh, oh, see, there we go. Uh, all right, so this is going to download the GGUF file for us. All right, so that's going to take a while because that's going to actually re-download that again. Uh, so, and yeah, so that we'll have a, I'll have the link up here, um, to how to get to these commands, uh, and I'll just have the commands in, in my write-up as well. 
uh, and then once this model is downloaded, uh, I'm going to come back and then we're going to download the C++ ported version uh, to, to the basically the engine to run this model. Uh, some dude, like, bless him because he, he ported all of the code to, into C++ to make it uh, more portable and, and uh, we can run it on peripheral devices like the Raspberry Pi and uh, the Pi 5. Um, and I'm sure you could probably do this with like a 4B as well. Um, because these, this, the way we're running it is going to be uh, mainly just using the CPU. So even though the Pi 5 has a GPU now, um, we're going to be running with just the CPU for this project. All right. All right. So now that our model is downloaded, uh, we need to go get the next repo. Uh, let's see, so how can I find this? Is a uh, just gonna run a search for Llama CPP, and it brings us to here. So, this is the uh, the C engine basically that this dude ported over to run, uh, run these uh, models. All right, so we're just gonna do the HTTPS command here, Oop, go back to our command. We want to get clone. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Let's take a look at what we've got in here now. All right. So now we see the GGUF file and we have the llama CPP file um, in there. Or the that llama CPP is a folder actually which we are going to CD into. All right, now let's take a look in here. It's got a lot of cool stuff in there. Uh, there are different models actually in the models uh, in there, but I, I want to run this, uh, this specific model that uh, we've got here. Also take a look at, the, um, let's see, inside of models. So those are the, the other GGUFs that we have in there. What I'm going to do is create a new folder. Models. So this is going to be one of the 7B models. So I'm making that directory. And then what I need to do is uh, let's see, go back. Persistent. Let's. Um, Want to move llama all right and we want to move that into llama cpp models uh, 70. all right so now we have uh, put our model in our models folder inside of the project and so let's see back into Llama CPP. All right. Okay, so now that we are in here, uh, we are going to want to actually um, compile all of this into C++. Uh, so we can do the make command. I'm just going to run just a regular make. Um, if you want to target specific things, you can do that, but I'm just gonna make the whole thing. And so what that's gonna do is it's going to, uh, yeah, compile all of the C++ code so that we can run it. So this is also uh, compiling a couple of other things we probably don't need. Uh, but I want to explore around later, so I'm going to just make all of these files. All right, so now that we have all of those compiled, uh, now we can run, um, let's see, uh, if you look at the docs on these, you can find all sorts of different things that you can run. 
Uh, but let's see, I'm going to run the slash main dash dash. Let's see, interactive first. Uh, this flag is going to uh, let you interact with it like it's GPT. Uh, and it's going to allow you to run it and then ask it a question. Uh, dash in the model. And then our model is in models. Models. Okay. That's weird. Uh, and then it was in 7D. All right, and that is our model. Let's run that. Get all this crazy output as if you've broken something for a second. And now it is telling us it is ready for our input. All right. Uh, tell me how to make espresso. There we've got it. Your own personal AI, right in your own machine. No third party data going anywhere. All of your stuff is all just within your own machine locally. Isn't that cool? <laughs> all right. So yeah, so we've got everything going. All right, and um, I will probably do a second part of this video. I think I'm going to try and figure out how to set up a microphone and some speakers to the Raspberry Pi and turn this thing into a voice to voice uh, assistant AI crazy thing. Awesome stuff that you can do with technology today. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to see if, uh, if this is actually making the correct kind of stuff. I'll see you guys later. Thank you for watching.